Okay, so here's a quick tour of my van. I wanted to run through a couple of the features and, and uh, theories that went into building this. So basically all the big items that we use frequently are placed close to the doors so you don't have to get into the van to get them, like the wings for the miter saw, a little step stool, and all the ladders are accessible without going inside the vehicle. Uh, starting at the back, uh, basically the whole van is made out of these uprights where, which are the exact same and they connect to the structure of the van with L brackets that are threaded and bolted into the side members of the vehicle. Uh, coming back this way, started out with uh, things we use a lot like paper towels, garbage bags, cleaning materials, and rolls of tape are up at the top and all labeled. Moving back, we've got two Festool MIDI vacuum cleaners and two SIS roll carts for moving tools off the job. Uh, right here there's a reel, which we can reel out 50 feet to plug the van into uh, charge batteries and run a compressor, which sits at the front. Uh, behind this, there is located a Festool Planex. Anything that's not plainly visible is labeled uh, vertically instead of horizontally, so you know it's back there. So if there's anything that's uh, mounted this way, you know it's hidden and you need to look to find it. Aside from these being held in with uh, these uh, bungee cord straps, there's also little cleats with ramps that the wheels sit in and that keeps the uh, this from rattling around a lot on the road and moving back and forth which drives me nuts if I'm driving. Moving back we've got uh, extension cords which I keep on a reel because it's so noisy to hear them banging if they're hung. Over here we've got uh, 100 feet of air hose and obviously a lot of sustainers. Uh, there's capacity for 45 to 47 sustainers uh, in this vehicle without having anything in the aisle um, and that's including all these open areas which aren't filled yet. Uh, we keep caulk storage up at the top foam and sealants up at the top as well. Behind the uh, sustainers, there's additional storage for things we use infrequently, like the Playnex. So we've got our roller trays back there, disposable trays. Uh, if you look here, there are uh, notches, which the feet of the sustainers drop into to keep them from moving, so there's no hold downs. And so far we've had no problems with anything falling out of these during driving. In front of the wheel wells, the sustainers are mounted upright to utilize the most of that area. So that's a SIS 3 that's able to fit on the sides and still give us 43 inches of walkway space. Coming up to the front, you can see we've got two towers of Milwaukee shelving up here. We've got a 3 foot by 6 foot workbench and saw horses that hold it up which serves as an outfeed for the table saw which sits on this stand the table saw and the miter saw sit here and they're both accessible from the side door so you don't have to lug them through the vehicle um, we've got a little workbench here for any quick sort of service related jobs and tools we use frequently uh, are mounted above the bench there's a clamp rack up on the ceiling as well as charging for the two battery platforms we use. And we've got a whiteboard which helps us keep track of our inventory. If we need to purchase anything, we uh, just write that down there. There's a little light, so if you're in here at night and you don't want to drain the battery, you can click that on and also bring it into the job site. There's a little hidden compartment here for a framing gun, which we don't use that frequently. One of the interesting features, which I'll show you later, but there's this bulkhead which houses a lot of material. So I'll show you what that looks like from the outside. So that's pretty much it for here. All these uprights are repetitive cuts. All these openings are repetitive cuts. And the only difference is this one's slightly wider for these two bays for these Milwaukee organizers, which are wider than the sustainers. But it keeps everything really modular if I want to move everything around. We've got shelf pin holes, which I use for indexing but these are actually held together with pocket holes, uh, which really keeps everything tight. There's nothing hanging in here, so if I rock this van, you don't hear a ton of stuff bouncing around, which drives you nuts if you've ever been in a work van. So there's nothing hanging really. I mean, this doesn't make a lot of noise, so uh, it's really the quietest van I've ever had. 
that uh, was full of this many tools. Okay, so over here at the side door, it's pretty much the same thing, but this shows how you get the uh, miter saw and the table saw out. Hearing protection at the front and back doors, so you're always being safe. Uh, pencils, pencil sharpener, pencils, sharpies, glasses, levels, tracks, painting poles, crowbars, six foot, step ladder, T square. There's also a roll of flooring protection that goes into this cubby. It's a little bit hard to see with the camera, but trust me, it's in there. So that's pretty much it for this van. It's working out quite well. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, let me know, and I will uh, answer that as quickly as I see it. Uh, this vehicle's got three seats in front, and its overall length isn't much longer than my old work truck, so we're able to get a lot more stuff to the job site in a more efficient and economic package. So let me know what you think, and thanks for watching.